Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Find a seat and fill it. By the way, it's so nice I've met some brand new people today, uh, first time to Grace. We love having new faces, and you came in a great day. Hope you'll come back, be a part of our uh, all the things that we have planned in the weeks ahead for holidays. It's going to be a great time, so you don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss it. All right. All right, I got a question for you. Who, who have been the most influential, significant role models in your life? Who are the most significant role models in your life? As you think of those people, you'll have to agree that role models are, are essential for us because they give our lives something that we need. They give our lives focus and direction. I've learned that people who don't have good, healthy role models, they just get off track. They, they miss their purpose in life, and they, they don't have focus. Now, I have also discovered that what is true of individuals is also true of churches. It's true. Churches need good role models. I've learned that a good, healthy role model church can give another church a great deal of focus and a great deal of direction and can keep that church on track. With, with this in mind, I went looking for a, for a church that would be a good, healthy role model for grace. I have great news. I found it in the Bible, in Acts chapter 11. And we're going to spend our time this morning in Acts chapter 11. The church is the church at Antioch. Now, there was something very unique about the church at Antioch. You see, up to this point in the book of Acts and in the history of the early church, the gospel had primarily been shared with Jews, and the church was comprised of primarily Jews who had, who had accepted Jesus as the Messiah. However, the church in Antioch, well, something happened very different. The church in Antioch was primarily reaching out not to Jews, but to Gentiles with the gospel of Christ. So here's how it all began. Let me read it to you. Uh, Acts 11, beginning in verse 19. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, that was down in Jerusalem, those, those people, Christians, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, Spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. And the Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Now this morning... As we read of this fascinating first century church, here's our goal. I want us to do two things together. Number one, I want to I find out, is this first century church in Antioch, I want to know, is it a purpose-driven church? Okay? Is it following the biblical principles? Now, ar around here at Grace, you guys have seen the Grace Baseball Diamond, right? You've seen the Grace Baseball Diamond, and it's a great picture of how we make it around the bases, all right? So there it is on the screen. So it's the five purposes of connect, grow, equip, reach, and adore. Those are the five biblical purposes given in Scripture designed for the church to follow. So we're going to look at the church at Antioch, see if the church at Antioch has their own baseball diamond, okay? And then number two, I want to see how we compare to this great church, and it is a great church. So we're going to take the church at Antioch, and then we're going to lay grace next to it, and we're going to see how are we doing so far in our history. I'm convinced by going through this exercise today, we will learn how a church plant can become a church that plants churches. Does that make sense? We want to be not only a church plant, which we are, 21 years old now, but we also want to be a church plant that plants churches. 
How does that happen? Let's see. Number one, here's the first challenge. You have to connect people. You have to connect people to the fellowship. Connect people to the fellowship. Let's go back to the church at Antioch, verse 22. News of this, that is that Gentiles are coming into the church, news of this reached the church in Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And here it is, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. So here in Antioch, as the gospel is shared, large numbers of Gentiles become followers of Christ and they join that church. People are added over and over and over again into the church membership. So what do we need to learn? In your notes, God's first purpose for his church is membership. Membership. God wants to bring people into the membership of his church and his family. All right, let's lay grace next to Antioch. Let's see how we're doing. How does grace compare? Since our beginning in May 1998, boy, that's a long time, isn't it? 1998, we have been adding members to the grace family. So here's where we are at the end of our 21st year, which, by the way, ended May 31st. That's kind of our anniversary birthday. So all these numbers are on that as the cutoff date. We started with 412 charter members. That's where this church started. The original signed charter, by the way, hangs out in the east hallway. We have now completed 121 membership classes So where are we? Class 101, Discovering Membership Graduates. We have now had 3,686 people graduate from Class 101. That's exciting. We have also, when it comes to baptisms, we have now baptized 1,038 people. And our present membership is 1,529 Boy, God has been so gracious to us to send so many people to grace and through grace. And uh, they've moved, they've spread out all over the country. And, by the way, we have sent a lot of people to glory in heaven. They've come to grace and found Christ and they died. And now they spend eternity with God. Isn't that great? So a purpose-driven church, number one, connects people to the fellowship. Number two, the second challenge is grow people in discipleship. We want to not just connect people, but grow people. That's what uh, Antioch did. Verses 25 and 26. I love this. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. By the way, what's his other name? Paul. Yeah, this is the Apostle Paul. Went to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church And taught great numbers of people, don't miss that, taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So what was going on here? Well, the task of discipling all these new converts must have been overwhelming to Barnabas. So what does he do? He puts Paul on staff at church. He's the 201 pastor. Okay? He's the pastor of maturity. He's, he's over discipleship. And so they spent an, an entire year in intense discipleship training in this church. So in your notes, God's second purpose for his church is maturity. He didn't want us to stay where we are. He wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. So how does grace compare? Well, years ago, we developed class 201, Discovering Maturity, in which we teach four spiritual habits needed for spiritual growth for the rest of your life, Bible study, prayer, fellowship, and giving. And we've been doing that over and over and over again. How have we turned out? Where we are right now, class 201, Discovering Maturity, the graduate total is 2,420. 
Also in the discipleship area, we have developed small groups. Do you realize we have small groups meeting every day, every night of the week, all over town, here at the building, in homes, in office complexes, uh, everywhere we have small groups. What are, what are we doing in small groups? We're growing, growing, we're growing. We've also developed this thing called Life Changer Classes. How many of you have ever taken a Life Changer class? Hands? Oh, yeah, good, yeah. Life Changer Classes, that's just spiritual growth for adults. All kinds of different classes we have going on. Tap into those. Why? Because it'll help you grow. A purpose-driven church grows people in discipleship. There's a third. You ready? Number three, we need to equip people for ministry. Equip people for ministry. Watch what happens back in our church at Antioch. During this time, this is when Paul and Barnabas are working there. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples there in Antioch, okay, the disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gifts to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Now skip to chapter 13, verse 1. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, and they name them. Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Serene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, our friend Paul, again. Now notice what's going on. These church members at Antioch have obviously been instructed in the importance of using their gifts and their talents to minister where? To the needs of the church. To the needs of the church. Did you see the two examples? Example number one, they got together as a church and contributed to the famine relief for their mother church down in Jerusalem. Now I want you to think for a minute. Just in that example, how many spiritual gifts are operating? Think about it. Uh, the spiritual gift of giving. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, the gift of mercy. Um, how about the gift of administration? Having to administer, put this offering together, make sure it got to the right place at the right time. They're using their spiritual gifts inside that church. Example number two is that reference to pat prophets and teachers. And it named prophets and teachers. This makes it clear this church is discovering and using the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit. So what do we learn here in your notes? God's third purpose for his church Ministry. Ministry. All right, how does grace line up with this third purpose? Well, we developed a class called Class 301, Discovering Ministry, and it's designed to help our members discover their unique shape for ministry where? In the church. How God uniquely shaped them. And so we follow this little acrostic, S-H-A-P-E, shape. All right, what does shape stand for? You have to go to class 301 and you learn. I'm not going to tell you. You got to go to the class. But here's what happened. Over the years, look in your notes, class 301, Discovering Ministry, we have now graduated 2,101 people. Because here at Grace, the pastors don't do the ministry. The members do the ministry. Every member is a minister. The pastor simply equip and train and resource the people to do the ministry. I've got to tell you as a pastor, this just turns my crank and floats my boat like nothing else. When I look out and I watch grace members leading the ministries, doing the ministries all week long, it is exciting. Why? A purpose-driven church equips people for ministry. Number four. Number four, we need to lead people in worship. Lead people in worship. Where in the world did we get that idea? Back to the church at Antioch, chapter 13, verse 2. While they were, what's the word? Ta-da. 
while they were worshiping, worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. This church at Antioch knows the importance of getting together and worship, getting together and magnifying and adoring God in worship. So in your notes, God's fourth purpose for his church is magnification. It's magnifying God and adoring God in worship. All right, where's grace on this one? Well, we developed a class called 501, Discovering Magnification, and it's designed to teach grace members the importance of being lifelong worshipers of God. What does it look like to draw a line in the sand, step across, say, I'm going to be a lifelong worshiper, I'm never going back. What does that look like? That's what we talk about in this class. Now, here's the cool thing. Here's the numbers on class 501. We have now graduated 1,646 people. Now, these graduates are then invited to participate in the team ministry. What's the team ministry? It's ongoing leadership training and equipping because everything rises and falls with leadership. Everything, everything. So we, and, and I try to spend a lot of time pouring in, into leaders who have completed all the classes and are part of the team ministry. You know, here at Grace, one thing I love about this church we love to get together. We, we like, it's, it's like we like each other. And we like to get together on Sunday morning in big groups like this. We like to get together in small groups and homes and around town. That's good. That's healthy. We like to get together and worship God. Why? A purpose-driven church leads people in worship. You ready for number five? I say number five for today since it's Mission Sunday. Reach people with evangelism. We reach people with evangelism. So back to our church in Antioch. So after they, the church at Antioch, had fasted and prayed, they, the church members, what? Placed their hands, kind of like we placed hands on the boxes this morning. They, they placed their hands on them, Paul and Barnabas, and sent them off. Where did they send them? On a vacation? No. This is the beginning of Paul's missionary journeys. They sent Paul and Barnabas on missionary journey number one. Now notice, I think it's very important the way this church developed. Once this church was finally, finally and firmly established itself, then it said, now we're ready to give it away. Let's get solid first, then we will begin to share the gospel. What God has given to us, we want to share with others. Now, this happened as it became, the church at Antioch became the host church for Paul's missionary journeys. What's the result? Well, as they say, the rest is history. This church at Antioch started planting churches all across the Roman Empire. See, it started as a local church, and then missionary journey number one was like a regional. They began to plant regional churches, and then the latter journeys of Paul, they, they took the gospel to Europe. Now, wh why is that important to us? That's why you're here. Do you know how, do you, know how you got here? Pa Paul took the gospel to Europe, it then spread on to Spain and to England, and then it crossed the pond to the east coast of America, and then it came across America to a place called Rosal, New Mexico. Do you realize you are here today because of what happened in Acts 13.3? There's your roots right there. Now notice, when Paul took the journeys, he did not go out having evangelistic crusades and then leave town. No, he planted churches, which then would grow and develop the five purposes, and then they would plant other churches, and they would plant other churches. So in your notes, God's fifth purpose for his church is missions. How does grace line up on missions? Well, years ago, we developed a class called Class 401, Discovering Missions, and it teaches members 
how they can fulfill their unique mission in the world. Their ministry in their church, but their mission is in the world. How have we done? Class 401, I love this. We have now graduated 1,795 people in class 401. And another class tonight will put us over 1,800. Now, for several years, as you saw in the video, we have partnered with Jerry and Kayla Costa, our New Vision Latin America missionaries. You know, when I read the book of Acts, Paul and Barnabas, I, I got to tell you, I think of Jerry and Kayla. Jerry is like Paul, the teacher. And Kayla, she is like Barnabas, you know, the son of encouragement. She is the daughter of encouragement. So we have our own Paul and Barnabas going all across Latin America, planting churches, resourcing purpose-driven churches. It's phenomenal. Now, this year for the very first time, I get to announce something new. We have now partnered with the Nolan family, Lyndall and Patty Nolan and their family, and they are planting Grace Community Church Bixby. And it's in Bixby, Oklahoma, where Lyndall grew up. They've now moved back, and they are our regional missionaries. Jerry and Kayla are our global missionaries. Guys, think about this. Do you realize how privileged we are that we are allowed to participate in making disciples locally in Roswell, regionally in Bixby, and globally through Jerry and Kayla in Latin America. Now, I want to remind you of one thing, very important. The Great Commission does not say go make converts. Uh-uh. doesn't say go make converts. It says go make disciples. And disciples are made best in disciple-making churches. And that's why a purpose-driven church reaches people with evangelism. So can you, can you see why I believe the church at Antioch is a perfect role model for us here at Grace? Why? It models a purpose-driven strategy that fulfills God's five biblical purposes for his church, and it's a church plant that plants churches. Now, when you die, I thought I'd end on a positive note. When you die, only two things will matter. Only two things, I promise. Only two things will matter when you die. All this, all this, no, you, it, it doesn't matter because you can't take it with you. And by the way, in the end, it all burns up anyway, right? When you die, only two things will matter. Number one, are you in heaven? Can we all, that's, that's important for me. When I die, I'm, I want to be in heaven. That's important. Number two, who did you bring with you? I'm telling you, when you die, only two things will matter. Are you in heaven? Who did you bring with you? Do you realize today that through your offerings for Jerry and Kayla, that through your offering filling these boxes that will be filled with the Gospel of Jesus Christ booklet going all over the world, do you realize, I mean, this is amazing, what we did today, there will be people in heaven because of what we did today. And guys, that matters. Are you in heaven? Who did you bring with you? In your notes, this is the vision of Grace Community Church, helping people find and fulfill God's purpose for their lives. And my friend, you have five purposes, and you now have it in your notes. And if you ever lose your notes, we have banners on the back wall, five of them, reminding you of God's purpose for your life. So how do we do it? By connecting people, growing people, equipping people, and reaching people so they can worship with us, the God of the universe, for all of eternity. Amen. Let's pray. Well, God, thank you that you have given us the awesome privilege of being your ambassadors. We can't believe it, God, that you would choose us. And so now, Lord, use us. Use us to be your witnesses in a lost, lonely, and hurting world. Use our gifts today. Use these boxes today 
to spread the life-changing, eternity-altering message of Jesus Christ. Lord, don't let us waste our lives. Remind us every day only two things matter. This is our prayer through Christ. Amen.